Let's take a look at the binomial series. This is one of the most interesting examples of Taylor series. It's the Maclaurin series for the function 1 plus x to the k, where k is some real number. Let's start by looking at the case where k is a positive integer. Well, we know 1 plus x squared is 1 plus 2x plus x squared, a familiar result from school. Uh, 1 plus x cubed, a little less well known, is 1 plus x, 3x plus 3x squared plus x cubed. 1 plus x to the fourth is 1 plus 4x plus 6x squared plus 4x squared plus x to the fourth. And we can carry on multiplying by 1 plus x and getting formulas for successive powers of 1 plus x. But a more important question is, where are these coefficients coming from? What are they and how do we calculate them? Well, you may remember that the coefficients come from Pascal's triangle. You see this last row here corresponds to the expansion of one plus x to the fourth. And these numbers are obtained by adding up the two numbers above a given number to the left and right. So three is one plus two and four is one plus three, etc. These numbers are called binomial coefficients for obvious reasons, but they also give us the number of ways of choosing a set of i objects out of a set of k objects. So uh, we often call this number k choose i. And the formula for it is k factorial divided by k minus i factorial times i factorial. If we write this out, we can cancel out the k minus i factorial with the tail of k factorial, what would have gone here. And that just leaves us with k times k minus 1, etc., down to k minus i minus 1. The next term would be k minus i, which is cancelling out down here. And on the bottom, we have i factorial. So both of these things, the top and the bottom, are a product of exactly i numbers. So remember that formula. For instance, 5 choose 2 is 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial. And then in this form, it's 5 times 4 divided by 2 factorial, 2 times 1, and we get 10. And that is the coefficient we saw in the expansion of 1 plus x to the fifth. It's the coefficient of x squared. And the classical binomial theorem states that 1 plus x to the power k is the sum from i equals 0 up to k, k choose i times xi. And if we write that out explicitly, it looks like this 1 plus kx plus k times k minus 1 over 2 factorial, x squared, etc. The coefficients are all, the coefficient of x to the i will be this number, k choose i. And back in the 1600s, Newton observed that this formula could be generalized to any k as long as we extended this uh, to an infinite series rather than just a finite polynomial. So in order to express this succinctly, let's uh, generalize the definition of the binomial coefficient to the case where k can be any real number. In this case, we're just going to have on the top k times k minus 1 multiplied by all the successive numbers down to k minus i minus 1 we're still going to divide by i factorial. So it's the same formula, it's just that we allow k to be any real number. Then the theorem states that 1 plus x to the k is equal to the sum from 0 to infinity of k choose n, x to the n. So this gives us the following infinite series. We can see using the ratio test that this will, series will always converge for x absolute value less than 1. So this formula holds in that case. For example, if we take k to be equal to minus 1, 1 plus x to the minus 1 is going to be, now we just take this formula and we put in minus 1 everywhere the k is. So we get minus 1 times x, and then minus 1 times minus 2 over x squared, minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 times x cubed over 3 factorial, etc. And if you think about this, what we're getting up here is going to cancel out. It's essentially going to be either plus or minus n factorial divided by n factorial. So 
the coefficients, the denominator and the numerator cancel out and just leave us with an alternating sign. So we have one minus x plus x squared minus x cubed. Of course, this is exactly uh, the formula that we obtained earlier from a completely different method by expressing, thinking of one plus x, one over one plus x as the sum of a geometric series. And if you remember, uh, this equality only holds when x has absolute value less than one. So there's no way that we could expect a better uh, bound for the values of x for which this is true than x having absolute value less than one. Let's talk briefly about where this formula comes from. Well, we know what the formula for um, a general Maclaurin series is. We need to find the nth derivative of the function and evaluate it at zero. So let's do this. If we differentiate this once, we get k times 1 plus x to the k minus 1. If we do it again, we get k times k minus 1, 1 plus x to the k minus 2, etc. So each time we reduce the power of 1 plus x by 1. So if we do it n times, it goes down to k minus n. And each time we multiply by the current power of x. So we get a series of numbers k times k minus 1, etc., down to k minus n minus 1. When we evaluate at 0, the term involving x just becomes 1 to some power, so that's 1. So we're just left with this product of terms here. Now we insert this into the general formula for the Taylor series. So uh, our coefficient of x to the n is this number divided by n factorial. And once we've divided by n factorial, we've got exactly this generalized binomial coefficient, k choose n. So the result is that the Maclaurin series for this function is the sum from 0 to infinity, k choose n times x to the n. We can see that this converges when x has absolute value less than 1 by the ratio test. It takes a little more work to show that it actually converges to the original function. That's not guaranteed, if you remember, but we won't address that question here. So let's move on and finish with one more example of how to use this formula. Let's take the case k equals a half. This gives us the Maclaurin series for the square root of 1 plus x. So remember the general formula was this involving k's. We just go ahead and insert everywhere there's a k. We replace it by a half. So we get this formula. Then we think a little bit about what that is to simplify it. The half minus 1 becomes minus a half. The half minus 2 becomes minus 3, three halves. And then finally, we simplify that again. Uh, so for instance, the x squared term is going to have 2 factorial on the bottom, then 2 times 2, which is 2 squared, and we have a negative sign. For the next coefficient, we have to multiply by minus 3 over 2. So that changes the minus to a plus, adds in a 3 on the top and a 2 on the bottom, and the 2 factorial changes to 3 factorial. So if we continue with that pattern, we see that the next term will have 4 factorial on the bottom times 2 to the 4th because we're multiplying by minus 5 over 2. So we'll also need to add a 5 on the top and change the sign. And if we continue with this, we see we're going to get the product of the uh, successive odd numbers on the, on the top and on the bottom, n factorial times 2 to the n. So this is the kind of answer we get when we try to uh, uh, explicitly get formulas for 1 plus x to the k for different values of k. Uh, generally, it'll be hard to, to give it in closed form as a summation, but it certainly should be easy like this to calculate the first four or five terms of the Maclaurin series.